So therefore, let's define natural law. So this is what we're going to be talking about for the rest of the day. We have to define it. <clears throat> the simple definition of natural is inherent, having a basis in nature, reality, and truth, not made or caused by humankind. So if it's natural, it wasn't made by man. Mankind didn't make it. Okay? And again, the origin of the word, neter in Egyptian, means spirit, and all means of or related to. So of or related to spirit. It is all of nature, the spiritual domain. See, this is the other part. People believe that the spiritual domain is separate from the physical domain. This is a huge thread and a huge central focus in all of my work. If you think the spiritual domain is not where you are at now because you're in the physical domain, you're mistaken. If you think that the spiritual domain is someplace other than the physical domain, you're also mistaken. If you place emphasis on one above the other and say, well, this one takes precedence and this one's not important. Either way you do it, whether you say the spiritual is more important and the world of matter should not be given any significance, it's imbalance, and it's not true, okay? Or if you say, hey, like scientism does in many, you know, left brain scientism, the, the material world is all that there is. This is just a dead mechanized clockwork called the universe, and it happened by accident for no reason. You know, and this, there's no such thing as the spirit, you know, spiritual domain. Both of these worldviews, and we're going to get to a breakdown of these worldviews, they're completely inaccurate, they're not based in truth, and most of all, they're based on brain imbalance, and we're going to see how one of these worldviews or another develops when either the left brain hemisphere or the right brain hemisphere has taken precedence and dominance within the individual consciousness. So natural means spiritual. The, these words could be used interchangeably. So when I'm talking about natural law, I mean spiritual law, unseen spiritual laws. But overall, the dictionary definition of natural is it's inherent to nature and it's not made by man. The word law is, the definition is, an existing condition which is both binding and immutable. So let's look at each one of these words. Existing. It means that it is present. It is present. Okay? It cannot be just ignored and expected that, oh, well, that doesn't make it true and it's, it's not going to have an effect. It's there. It's present. That's why it's a law that it's in operation, that is in operation. It is binding. Binding means it has an effect. It means it doesn't matter whether you believe that it has an effect. It doesn't matter whether you understand that it has an effect. It doesn't care. And this is another big hammer to the ego. The human ego wants to hear what it wants to hear. One of the things it wants to hear is, the universe cares about you, personally. It cares about John. It cares about Bob. It cares about Mary. It cares about... Elizabeth, whatever, okay, cares about you individually as a being. Okay, now, you could go so far as to say you believe that the creator of the universe cares about you. I'm not, I'm not denying anybody or saying don't th think that. What I'm saying is that the laws of the universe don't care about you. Laws have been created in this realm that work flawlessly, 100% of the time, flawlessly. Let me, let me ask people to envision this scenario to try to clarify this. A couple are on a picnic. They're out in a state forest or something like that. They're on a picnic. About 50 yards away from where they're at, okay, there's a pretty tall cliff, maybe about 200 feet, okay, and it ends in some jagged rocks. They brought their two-year-old child on the picnic with them. They on, Unfold the blanket, take out the picnic basket, they're having their picnic. Maybe uh, passions got heated and the husband and wife were, you know, making out a little bit. Their, their kid, two-year-old daughter in her nice Sunday sundress or whatever, wanders off, gets to the edge of that cliff. Will gravity care if that girl goes over the edge? Will gravity allow her to go over the edge? That, yes, it will. Gravity is not going to say, this girl doesn't understand this law, and she'll die if she goes over that edge. She's innocent. She's nescient, even. Not even ignorant. 
innocent and nescient, will that law still have an effect? You damn better well believe it will. And so does natural law in the same way. It doesn't care whether you don't know. It doesn't care whether you're nescient or ignorant. It's in effect. It's binding. And it is immutable. Immutable means that nothing you can ever do can ever change it. It is in effect eternally. Because man didn't put it into effect. You know who put it into effect? The creator of the universe put it into effect. And I don't really care what you think of that force as. You could think of it as an impersonal force. You could think of it as the man with the beard. You could think of it as this remote control. I don't really care what you think of it as. Personally, that's none of my business. But you know what? If you think of it that it's man that makes the laws, then I have a problem. Because man doesn't make these laws I'm talking about. The creator of the universe set these laws into motion. Put them into effect and they bind you. You and I are bound by these laws, whether we like it or not, whether we accept it or not, whether we understand it or not. They're in effect and you are already creating the reality that we are experiencing based upon interaction with these unseen laws. Already. You're already doing it. You can never not be doing it. That's an impossibility. Okay? You're always creating, co-creating in harmony. I'm sorry, in cooperation, I should say. Whether it's in harmony or opposition is a different story. In cooperation with these spiritual laws that I'm going to talk about. You are already creating in cooperation with them and can never not do so as long as you exist in the physical domain. Okay? So that's what the simple definitions that we're working forward with. Natural law doesn't mean anything other than this. That's it. It means, so let's put them together. Inherent, existing conditions. Conditions that exist in nature which are both binding and immutable. They have an effect whether they're understood or not, and they cannot be changed. So what would be our requirement of knowledge here? What do you think should be done? If we are always working with these, do you think we're going to create something that is wise to create? that is good, that is in alignment with what we say we want if we don't know how these laws operate? You know what's going to be created? A mess. Total chaos. Something you don't want. Something that leads to enormous suffering. Which is where we're at. If, on the other hand, you have that knowledge of how these things work, then you align your behavior to them, you're going to create a whole new different ball game. And then you're going to not have self-inflicted suffering. Okay? That's what this is all about. So let's give a working definition. This is what I call the sound bite. Right? People say, well, tell me what natural law is, Mark. Uh, you, you have a few days? Maybe a, a, a large portion of the day like we're going to cover today. Maybe. Some people will get it. Okay? But uh, really, you need to devote a large amount of time to, to studying this, understanding it, reading about it, and even experimenting with it. These are, this is not an untestable hypothesis. Okay? And it's not a hypothesis. It's actually a law. But it's not untestable. You can test it. You can apply all the scientific methodologies to natural law. Same thing. Gather your information, observe, hypothesize, hypothesize, observe, test the results, publish the results. That's the scientific methodology. The scientific methodology will be borne out for everything I'm talking about in this presentation if it is applied. Because this is not a religion. This is not some new age mumbo jumbo. This is a science. It is a science that constitutes knowledge of how laws that are existent, in operation, and immutable in this universe work and how we are creating what we experience in conjunction with these op operating laws. And man didn't put them into effect. Whatever created this universe put them into effect. I'm not here today to tell you what that is. Your, your job in, in your own personal experience is to get in touch with what you feel that is. I'm not here to tell you what that is. Now, I'm not here to tell anybody what that is. But my whole point is, it created these laws and they're in effect. 
And if you want to stop suffering, and if you want the human condition to change, you have to understand how these laws work. There is no way around that. Knowledge of these laws is required. And this is what people in the so-called New Age movement and in religious communities and in other communities don't want to acknowledge. They don't want to acknowledge that work is required. So let's give a working definition for natural law, my soundbite variant, okay? I tell people who want the 6 o'clock news edition of what natural law is, okay? Natural law is universal, non-man-made, binding and immutable conditions that govern the consequences of behavior, and specifically, at least on this planet, human behavior. I would say in the universe, it governs the behavior of all intelligent beings. Intelligent beings. Okay? Natural law is a body of universal spiritual laws which act as the governing dynamics of consciousness. The governing dynamics of consciousness. That's the working definition. Let's look at the dynamics between discovery and belief. The difference between discovery and belief. Because again, natural law is capable of being discovered, understood, and harmonized with. Now, does that sound like a religion? Religion asks people to believe, accept, and do without question. What this is, is saying, this exists, you're bound by it, the best you can do is to understand its operation like you would understand gravity and therefore not just walk toward the edge of a 200 foot cliff that is bottomed, bottomed by jagged rocks. If you're intelligent and you understand how the law of gravity works, you won't do that behavior. Okay? Just like if you're intelligent and you understand how natural law works, you won't do certain behaviors to create a prison for the entire species, for your entire species. Unfortunately, humanity has not reached that level of consciousness yet. They are not at that level of co-creative intelligence to understand how these laws work and then align their behaviors to them. So natural law has nothing to do with religion. It's not a belief system. It's a science. It is a discoverable operation that is already in effect that we can either understand and align our behavior to or remain ignorant of and suffer as a result of that ignorance because it's already in effect and already has, an, has a binding effect upon you and your behaviors and everyone's. So when it comes to belief, and anybody that was trying to propagate a religion wouldn't put this slide up here. When it comes to natural law, it, is, it works just like gravity. So the clown that's going to jump over the cliff saying, I don't believe in gravity, what's going to happen? Down he goes. Because belief is irrelevant. Because natural law does not care about you. It does not care about you. It is in effect, no matter what you do, deal with it. And people don't want to hear that. And I recognize this. I, I recognize I'm not telling anybody anything they want to hear. If, if I wanted to sell a lot of stuff, if I wanted to be real popular, I'd come up here and I'd tell you exactly what you want to hear, and then I'd be making $50,000 a presentation like Wayne Dyer does. Okay? And that is his fee. I, I know because I've actually had some people speak to his management. That's what, that's what a new age presenter gets. You know what I ask for? Zero. I don't even ask for a stipend. Because I don't want, I don't even care about fake money. I care about making real money. Real one eye. The word money is actually one eye. And people don't even, have said it a billion times in their life and never recognize what they're saying is one eye. And it's the symbol of the one eye, which represents spiritual enlightenment, is plastered all over the one dollar bill. Okay? Well, this is the one. See, I tell people, I'm a poor man when it comes to the fake money, but I'm very rich in the real stuff. The real thing, I have tons of. The fake stuff, I don't do so well with, and I don't care. It's not what I'm concerned about. I know it's fake. 
Okay? So I don't ask for a stipend when I present. I, I tell whoever's setting up the presentation, pay for my travel and lodging. Hook me up with a dinner or whatever. That's it. I'll come out and speak anywhere. Okay? The point is, if I was trying to appeal to somebody's ego and what they wanted to hear, I would tell you your beliefs are very important. Your beliefs shape. And they, they do shape your reality. In a negative way, if you don't align yourself with truth and you want to stay attached to a belief system because you prefer it over what's real, okay? So when it comes to natural law, I'm not telling people don't believe in yourself. See, people will say, there's forms of belief that are good. Yeah, I acknowledge that. I understand that. Believe in yourself. Believe in your own ability to, to, to come to this understanding of, of information like this. But I'm explaining when it comes to a law that is existent in the universe, your belief doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. The universe doesn't care what the, the, that, those parents at that picnic whose child just went over the cliff believed. It doesn't care whether that girl doesn't know what, how gravity works. It's going to have an effect. You act a certain way like a computer. Boom, you put this in, here's how you program this, that's what has to come out, invariably. Invariably, it is nothing personal. Natural law is not a personal force. It is an impersonal force. That every single mystery tradition and occult tradition that is actually wanted to share this knowledge with people, has been telling people about and attempting to tell people about since time immemorial. It is an impersonal force. It does not care about you. It does not worry or care in the slightest bit whether you understand it or accept it or not. It is an effect. You are bound by it. The end. And stop crying in your milk over it. That's it. No one wants to hear that. And I'm not so naive that I recognize people don't want to hear that, that I don't recognize that. I do recognize that. Believe me, I realize the wall I am up against in saying this. I get it fully, fully. If I wanted to blow smoke up people's rear ends, I'd come up here and I'd say, the universe cares about you and what you believe. And it's going to gauge that. It's going to, it's going to look at all that and it's going to tabulate it and it's going to say, well, what did he believe when he took this action? It doesn't, it's not going to say that. It's going to say, is this what happened? Yes or no? Yes. Here's the result. That's it. Unwaveringly and invariably. The human ego has a hard time with that. There was a, some popular TV show. I don't even remember what it was. Uh, Barb had downloaded it. And she was watching an episode, and it said, humanity's greatest fear is that truth is absolute. And I, I, I usually don't bother watching any television, okay? I, I, I have downloaded, I download a couple of shows to watch them because I, they're allegories, and I want to pick apart the allegory. But I wasn't even watching this one, but I heard it, and I, my head snapped around Whoa, that came through a network television show? How'd that happen? Humanity's greatest fear is that the truth is absolute. The ego has a hard time with the concept of any absolutes. It loves relativism. That's another part of the big trap of where we're at. Relativistic ideas, and especially when it comes to morality. We're going to talk about moral relativism. But the concept here is natural law does not require your belief to be in effect. No more than gravity requires your belief to be in effect. Okay? It need, that needs to be understood. Human belief.